Are you ready to take the lead in the dance of life? Fall in love with who you are right now and find uninhibited joy every day? Then it's time for you to flaunt your smart, sexy, and spiritual self. Join radio host Laura Cheadle and learn how the five steps of flaunt can help you quit seeking approval, proving your worth, and release you from the judgment of others. Express all that you are, discover your naked self-worth, and finally, enjoy the life you've worked so hard to create. Welcome! You are listening to Flaunt, the podcast for women who are really ready to get to know themselves again, to show themselves unapologetically for who they authentically are, not for who they think they should be, and to re-choreograph the next stage of their life on their own terms so they can live with enthusiasm, joy, and satisfaction every day, no matter what is going on around them. I'm Laura Cheadle, and I'm a former corporate attorney turned burlesque dancer, yep, author, and you might have guessed it, life choreographer. Today, we're going to talk about a very important aspect of choreographing the next chapter of your life. We're going to talk about vision. And after the show today, you will know exactly how to create a vision for the upcoming year or even maybe for the next few years that you can actually create. Instead of just wishful thinking, this show is going to teach you how to go deep, how to go within, and how to truly create the kind of vision for you and your life that not only not only that you want but that you deserve. Okay, how many of you have ever created vision boards? I'm raising my hand. I love vision boards. They're fun to create. They are creative. <laughs> it gives you a chance to just kind of sink in and ponder and think and, and do things. It's a ton of fun. And the reason vision boards work is because they focus your attention. And where our attention goes is what we tend to notice. And then we tend to be able to more easily create things that we are noticing. And there's this phenomenon. When you expect something to happen, you look for things that support whatever it is you're believing. So that's why vision boards work. They focus your attention on your vision, and then your brain starts sifting and sorting and noticing what out there supports your vision. Now, there's also a problem with vision boards. The problem with vision boards is that they focus on those external things. Vision boards don't focus on how you want to feel. They focus on what you want to have. And if you're anything like me, your whole life has been pretty much focused on what you want to have. And then how you feel kind of becomes secondary and what's frustrating about that then is when you're not feeling very good, you don't know why, and then you get disappointed because the things that you have don't make you feel the way that you want to feel. How many of you have ever gotten something and then been disappointed? I remember when I was graduating from law school, it was this big thing. I'm getting my doctoral hood. It's this huge graduation ceremony. It's this big accomplishment. And the ceremony was a letdown. It was like, okay, that was it. I walked across the stage and that was it. Shouldn't that have meant more? Women that I've worked with have described that phenomenon in a variety of different settings. Some women have been disappointed at their wedding. Sometimes stuck home with a crying baby, women are disappointed 
in this idea of motherhood. Not that they didn't love their spouse, not that they don't love their kids, nothing like that. It's just that this expectation of the thing sometimes overtakes how we want to feel. And then the way we actually feel is disappointing because we're human and because so often we experienced mixed emotions around things and we don't know how to manage those mixed emotions. I had a love-hate relationship staying home with my kids. And you know what? That's sometimes hard to admit because people think that they can't admit to the negative parts. I love my kids more than anything in the universe. I am so thankful for the time that I got to spend with them. I loved being able to shepherd them and guide them and teach them. However, I did not enjoy being exhausted. I did not enjoy not having a hot second to myself. I didn't enjoy sometimes not being able to take a shower or go to the bathroom without being interrupted by crying. There were times having two kids 22 months apart when I couldn't get them to, quote, behave, and I didn't know what to do about it. I couldn't make my kids calm down, go to sleep, listen, quit fighting, whatever it was. And I was incredibly frustrated. Mixed feelings are normal. And when we focus on how we want to feel, and we are realistic with our idea of how we want to feel, happily ever after isn't a thing. Then we are able to create the vision and have the vision and find the kind of satisfaction and joy and enthusiasm for life that we are looking for. Throwing in this quick little segue here. If you've been listening and been like, yes, yes, that's me. I don't care what I have. Well, maybe I do, but I want to feel a certain way. I'd rather be truly happy than have a red car. Or I'd rather be truly fulfilled than have a house on a golf course. Or I'd rather be whatever it is than have. If you're thinking, yes, that is me. I hear you, Laura. I get it. Jump online, go to yoga lesque, Y O G A L E S Q U E dot online, yoga lesque dot online, and get on the wait list because I've got my yoga lesque class coming up next month. And yoga lesque is kind of the solution to all of that because what it does is it helps you turn your body and your emotions and yourself into a living vision board. So you can really create the kind of life that gives you the kind of feelings that you want to experience. So that was just my little segue. Go to yogalask.online and get on the wait list. You'll also get some amazing information. Whether or not you do the class, it doesn't matter. You can get the information around that feeling and how to create the feelings. So now back to today, now back to creating your vision for 2021 and beyond. All right. The first thing we have to do in create a vision is figure out where you are at. Now, you might be thinking, what? Why do I have to look at the past? I'm creating a vision for the future. And my response to that is, yes, and you also need to know accurately where you are at, or you're never going to create a realistic version of where you want to be. In my book, I've got a chapter that talks about life is a labyrinth, not a maze. A labyrinth is not a maze. It is a singular path that has one starting point and it has one ending point. But what makes a labyrinth unique and meaningful to walk is because that path twists and turns. There can be labyrinths with four quadrants, with six, with nine, with all of these different circuits. 
And it is so easy to get turned around when you're in a labyrinth and think, I'm facing the wrong way. I'm going further away from my goal. Where am I on this journey? That is why step one in creating your vision for 2021 and beyond is to pull back. It's to look and it's to figure out where you are in the grand scheme of things. So don't just say, I'm putting 2020 behind me. I'm putting that bad marriage behind me. I'm putting my financial troubles behind me. If you put something behind you, it really means that you're ignoring them. And you can't ignore them. Everything is relevant. Everything is relevant. Hover above and see where you're at. It's sort of like when you're using GPS. If you plug in the destination, great. That's like figuring out your vision. This is where I want to go. I want to be happy, healthy, and satisfied. I want to be financially free. I want to be in a good relationship. I want whatever it is. Perfect. That is one little teeny tiny piece. And although it's very relevant, That's not what's going to get you there. Knowing where you want to go is truly only half the battle. If you did not have location turned on on your GPS and you only put in your destination, you are never going to figure out how to get to that destination until you know where your starting point is is. I want to repeat that. You will never get to your destination until you know what your starting point is. Think about that. A destination is great, but you've got to know where you're starting from. That's why the first step in creating your vision for 2021 is pulling back, knowing both where you want to go and where you are at right now. And once you know those two things, then your path becomes clear. Otherwise, It's like that joke, squirrel, 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 shiny object, shiny object. Have you ever had shiny object syndrome? I have. I see all of these things and they look like shortcuts. They look like amazing things that I want to do or that I should do or that's going to help me. They're shiny, sparkly objects, but they're not on my path. They might be on somebody else's path or they might be on my path later. But until I am clear and until you are clear on where we are at and where we want to be, our path cannot illuminate. Ah, Sit with that for a second. How does that feel? Now, it's imperative that you don't get sucked in to the negative energy of where you've been. I might have made a bad choice in relationships. I did the wrong thing with my kids. I took the wrong job. Whatever it is. Don't get sucked into the energy of what happened and what got you to where you're at. Because that is irrelevant. It is irrelevant how you got to the place that you're in. The only thing that's relevant is knowing where you are there. Of course, you may self-reflect and say, I had daddy issues. That's why I got here. (laughs) Or I was blindsided by this and I was not advocating for myself, blah, blah, blah. It's okay to self-reflect, but for purposes of creating your vision, let that stuff go. What matters is only knowing where you're at. 
say it to yourself. I am in deep financial trouble. I am in an unfulfilling relationship. I have totally lost myself. I feel like a failure. I am struggling with a scary diagnosis. I am terrified that people who I love will die. Whatever it is, state clearly where you are at and do not sugarcoat it. (sighs) Breathe in, breathe out. The middle step of flaunt is AU. Flaunt is an acronym. And I call AU the golden center of flaunt because it's truly where all of our power comes from. And AU stands for accept unconditionally. And that is step one in creating your vision, accept unconditionally where you are at. (sighs) All right. Now that you have accepted unconditionally where you're at, think about where you want to go. Of course, you can think about it in concrete terms. But like I was saying at the beginning, think about how you want to feel because truly that is what matters. Why do you want the Louis Vuitton handbag? You want to carry something pretty because you want to feel pretty. You want to feel like you have status. You want an external trophy that symbolizes your hard work. I'm not saying that what you want is superficial. I'm saying that what we all want satisfies a need. I want a connected relationship because I want companionship. It's not that I'm dependent or codependent. It's because I want that kind of companionship. I want nice things. I want the external proof that I am successful. We don't lie. We all do. (laughs) There's nothing superficial about that. I want people that I love to have good things happen to them. I want a car that has heated seats because I really like to be comfortable. I want a home that I can come home to and that I can have room to spread out and to organize the things that I buy, that I have that bring me joy. I like fresh flowers on my counter and I like fresh flowers in my bathroom. They bring me joy. So on my vision board, I might have flowers or a certain kind of car with heated seats. I also have a heated steering wheel. And let me tell you, I love that. And I want that because I like to feel pampered, because I like to feel like I'm being taken care of, because I feel like I struggle in so many other different ways that it's nice sometimes to just get in my car, click a couple of buttons and be like, ah, I am being held by my car. Go to the why behind the things that you want. Go to the why behind your vision. I want financial abundance because the stress around not being able to pay my bills and juggling money and, you know, robbing from Peter to pay Paul, that's stressful. I don't like the feeling of stress. I don't like the feeling of shame around that. I don't like the feeling of fear around that. Go to the feeling, go to the why. Why do you want what you want? What are those feelings around your vision? That's step two. And just like accepting unconditionally when you had to hover above 
and accurately assess where you were, sometimes figuring out the why is difficult because we tend to get a little defensive sometimes. Well, I just want it and I've just earned it. And if I want this handbag, I can have it. Of course you can. But why? And just like we talked about accepting unconditionally where you're at, accept unconditionally the reasons why. If you want something because you want to prove to somebody else, acknowledge that. Don't judge that. It is okay to want something out of jealousy. It is okay to want to prove yourself in some regard. It's okay. Just notice it. Because once you admit it, then it's easier to be like, okay, I get it. (laughs) I have been really crazy competitive and jealous with this person. Do I really want that? Or is this one of those things that I'm going to spend a lot of time and money and effort getting, and it's really not going to bring me joy? Because really what it's all about is bringing yourself joy. When you think about where you're at and then where you claim where you want to be and the path lights up, you will start seeing some complications on that path. And I'd like to remind you that all paths have roadblocks. I said earlier that FLAUNT is an acronym. The N in FLAUNT stands for navigate navigate the negative. When we navigate, we steer. We speed up sometimes. We slow down sometimes. We turn left or right. We go over. We go under. Sometimes we barrel through. Sometimes we take a huge detour, but we navigate. The same is true for your vision. Things will come up. I promise you it is not the universe saying, you don't deserve this. You're not worthy enough. You're not good enough. I also promise that that voice in your head is going to say that you are unworthy, that it is your fault, that it's not meant to be. That voice in your head is a pretty mean voice. I know because I've got one too. Name her and tell her to sit back down and go wait in the corner because you have got some navigating to do. As your path lights up, as you see your most immediate next step and then the next step, you turn left, you turn right, you go straight, whatever, as you are on your journey, what's going to happen is you're going to have a series of both allies and enemies that get in your way. Your allies can be good or they can be bad and your enemies can be good or they can be bad. And all I am hoping to aspire you to do right here today is to realize that. Sometimes The people who are cheerleading you, yes, 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 go on, go on, you've got this, really, truly have your best interest at heart. We all know who those cheerleaders are in our life. We know those people who we can always go to and they will say, I trust you. I know that if this is your vision, you can do it. You can lose that 10 pounds. You can lose that 50 pounds. You can leave that bad marriage and you can set out on your own and you can be happier because of it. Find your cheerleaders. Find your cheerleaders. We all need them. Now, sometimes we've got some negative cheerleaders and they're not really cheerleaders. They're the kind of people who are cheering us on But because they really want to turn it around and make it about them, they want to ride your coattails, 
They don't really have your best interest at heart. They kind of want something from you. You know the difference. We've all survived to middle school. We've all been in junior high. We know the whole mean girl and mean boy thing. Let those people go. You don't have to confront or address it, but just know who your real cheerleaders are and receive from them. We all deserve to receive. Receive that love from them. Reciprocate when the time is right. And the people who are cheering you on kind of in that false icky way, you can smile and you can let that go. Similarly, with the enemies out there, I am going to tell you a secret. Are you ready to hear my secret around enemies and haters? Most often, our haters are simply just jealous of us. And I say that with love. They are jealous that we are doing something. They are jealous that we have claimed our vision. They are jealous that we accurately assessed our starting point. They are jealous that we have a path because they don't. And that's where most haters come in. Let's think about, let's talk about politics, religion, all those biggies where people get really, really riled up and where they really get into other people's face and start hating. They do it because they feel threatened in some way. Because somebody else is doing something or getting something that they wish they were doing or that they wish they were getting. When any of us are very secure in our own beliefs, when we're very secured in our own identity, when we're very secure in whatever it is, we truly don't feel the need to comment on others. We don't feel the need to judge others. So when you have enemies or haters, even if it's your own parents saying, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do that? Oh my goodness, you have such a secure job and it's really hard to be divorced at your age. And what will the kids think? And what will the neighbors think? These haters, these enemies, these detractors, yes, they are probably doing it in love, but it's just that they're bringing their fear. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. And it worked out for me. Look at what I did. I stayed in this abusive marriage. I made it work. I stayed in my nine to five job that I absolutely hated. And even though it cost me my health and my happiness in the best years of my life, I have a retirement and you should do what I'm doing. Because that right there is the basis of what detractors, enemies, and haters are trying to do. They're trying to lure you in to do exactly what they did so they feel better about themselves. If I can get you to drink with me, it's not glaringly obvious that I'm day drinking. If I can get you to stay in a miserable relationship just like me, then we can commiserate together and it makes me feel better. Just think about that. Some detractors do have your best interest at heart. Are you sure you want to do that, sweetheart? Some are just jealous. But either way, you are the only one that knows your path. You are the one that accurately assessed where you're at. You are the one that accurately chose where you want to be. And you are the one on this journey. Now, there's so much to unpack there. <laughs> and I get that we could probably spend another 45 minutes talking about that. All I want to leave you with is this. As you are traveling your path, as you have created your vision, it's okay.
okay to struggle. It is okay to struggle. Not only is it okay to struggle, it's expected to struggle. And it is the struggle that is going to refine your vision. It's going to refine your identity. And it's going to bring you so much joy. You've heard the phrase, I'm sure it's not the destination, it's the journey. Yes and no. It is the journey. The journey is where you have the joy. The journey is where the living takes place. When we say we're creating our vision for 2021 and beyond, of course, you might have a goal for January 1st, 2022. You wouldn't really want that goal tomorrow. Now, I understand I push back. Sometimes I'm like, yes, I would. (laughs) I would absolutely love to lose weight instantaneously, make a million dollars instantaneously, have the relationship of my dream instantaneously, whatever. But again, that's that happily ever after ideology that truly doesn't work, nor does it bring joy. Because whatever happens after that is, well, and now what? And now what? You've lost the weight. And now what? And now you can wear a bikini on the beach. Guess what? You can wear a bikini on the beach right now. And now what? And now you will feel sexy and you will love your body and you will have the best relationships. Guess what? You can love your body right now. You can feel sexy right now. I don't care how old you are, how much you weigh, what is, quote, wrong about your body. You can be sexy and feel good and love your body so much right now. And in fact, until you love your body so much right now, it's going to make losing weight or getting in shape or feeling sexy or learning this or whatever it is, it's going to make that all the harder. It's about the feelings, remember? Having a goal and setting a year plan really allows you the time and the journey to start creating the feelings that you want to create. There's nothing worse than having somebody tell you, snap out of it, be happy. Because we can't snap out of it and we can't just be happy. Nor should we. We should feel everything. However, being happy, being able to have fully processed everything and to be healed might be your vision. It's going to take a while to practice feeling happy. What does feeling happy feel like to me? I've been in a state of grief for a long time. I've been in a state of sacrifice and exhaustion and work and bad health and bad relationships for a long time. What does that even feel like? That's the practice. Those are the steps. That's the journey. So that by the end of 2021, By January 1st, 2022, you will have spent a whole year practicing being happy. You will have spent a whole year failing at being happy, winning at being happy, pivoting your idea of what it means to feel the way you want to feel. I had mentioned earlier not feeling lonely. What does that even mean? As you know, if you have been my listener for a while, I went through an absolutely gut-wrenching and harrowing experience with infidelity with my husband. It was the worst experience I have ever experienced. And through the years following my discovery of his infidelity, I had the opportunity 
to create a vision of what I wanted a loving, committed, deep, romantic relationship to look like. And guess what? It made me realize I had never worked on that vision before. Even though I was 50 years old, I had never truly given myself the opportunity to have that journey. I had just jumped right into the idea that I want a loving relationship. I want a kind man. I want a committed man. I want to be happy. I want to be romantic. I want to be passionate. I want to have similar values. I could spit out all of those things that I could, that we all spit out. I want to feel good. I want to be loved. What does that mean? It has taken a lot of time to really get into what does that mean? I want to be cherished and loved. How does that feel? Whoa, that's a lot. And that was the time and the experience and the readjusting of the journey. So now I know, I know in my soul how I want to feel. I know how I want to feel waking up. I know how I want to feel in an argument, in perfect alignment. I know how I want to feel, what I want to receive, what I want to give. I know all aspects. I have got a 360-degree view of the feelings around a beautiful, committed romantic relationship that is in full integrity. And until I took that whole journey, I hadn't done that before. Which leads to the third and the next step in creating your vision. First, it's hovering above it all and accurately assessing where you're at on the journey. Number two, it's moving into that why. Why do I want this vision? Why do I want this in my life? And then navigating along the way. And that third point is integrating. When we're creating a vision for our life, we need to integrate. We need to integrate the past the present, with our vision of the future. And again, that is a mistake that so many of us make. We have a vision that isn't in alignment with who we are or where we've been or why we want it. And then it just doesn't make sense. Sometimes it's easy to see things in the physical. It's harder to see them, you know, in our heads as an abstract concept. It's easier to see them in the physical. I want you to think about whatever sport you've played, whether it's, you know, soccer or basketball or baseball or kickball or a sport like ice skating or dancing or cheerleading. When there's a new skill that you want to attain, you know what that skill is. I want to, I don't even know what some of the sports terms are. (laughs) I want to kick a field goal. I want to make a basket. I want to do a, what is it? A double axle. I want to be able to do a fuete pirouette. Or in yoga, I want to do flying crow. That thing that you want to do is your vision. It is your vision for 2021. But if you start from the wrong spot, you will never build the skills necessary to get there. I am not an ice skater. I took ice skating lessons with my kids 
and it was really fun. But if I go in and say, I'm an experienced skater, teach me how to do a double axel, my starting point is so wildly different and I'm never going to build those base skills and I'm not going to succeed or it's going to take so much longer because I'll be on some circuitous path because I've lied about where I'm at. And then why do I want it if I can't tell you why, because it's a personal goal and I really want it, or I don't know why it just sounds good. I will not have the drive to keep doing it if I'm not tuned in with my why. And then, and this is point number three, that integration of the past and the present. If I am paralyzed from the waist down, it's not going to work for me. And that's a very crude example, and I get it. But that is the exact reason why I did it. We've got to integrate who we really are and what is our past and where are we. I have really bad vision. There are certain things without contacts or glasses. There's no way I can do it. I have to be realistic. If you are paralyzed from the waist down, You cannot do ice skating in the traditional way that you would think about ice skating. You have to do it a different way. I have to use glasses or contacts in order to do certain things. There are some body types. I taught fitness for years and years and years, and I even personal trained for a while. We have things called a bone structure. We even have soft tissue that is different on our bodies. Some people have a hip bone structure that is large. I don't care how little they eat. I don't care what exercises they do. I don't care what is their vision or what is their why or what are the feelings around it. If your hip structure is a certain size, your hip structure is a certain size. Soft tissue as well. Think about the saddlebags on the side of some people's thighs. That is a genetic structure. You can't diet it away. Maybe you can, but it'll make you so incredibly unhealthy because that is a piece of your body. That is the way you're built. That is what I mean by integrate your past and your present. Let's get really real about some of these things and integrate and be realistic about your vision. I am all for magical thinking. I am all for the universe. I am all for answering prayers. I am all for all of that. And although I fully believe, and I have heard some of those rags to riches stories, you know, I was living in my car and within 30 days I had a mansion and, you know, the love of my life and I had dropped all this weight and I, maybe for some, I believe it can be done, but I also believe it really isn't the way it works for most of us. Come on, I've got a background as an attorney. Yes, I'm very right-brained, creative, and magical, but yes, I also am very left-brained and linear. And I believe that that is my strength, quite honestly, when I am working and coaching with women. I can bridge that gap. I can do both things. Let's be really realistic. Can you make a million dollars this year? Sure. Will you probably make a million dollars this year? No. Because look at where you're at. Look at the roadblocks in the way. Look at all of the things that you'd have to overcome. Now, if you're why and if you're totally dedicated to that, of course you can, but most people probably aren't. So let's just get really real about it. Going back to my fitness and my personal training days, I did a lot of work around weight loss. There is a certain math. 
<laughs> calories in, calories out. You can only lose a certain amount of true fat weight in a day, in a week, in a month. I'm forgetting that exact number. I think it was a pound is 2,500 calories. It is what it is. You can't change that. You really can't exercise away a pound of fat in a day. You really can't do that. The human body just can't do that. You can burn 500 extra calories a day. You can give yourself a caloric deficit of 500 extra calories a day. And that's a That's pretty aggressive, but that is doable. Be realistic about your vision. And what's wonderful about that is when you're truly realistic about your vision, you do start changing. And this is the best part for me. You help those around you start changing too. Because they see you go through the different crises. They see you navigate all of these difficulties. They see you letting go of these external markers of success. They see you challenging the status quo. And then you become a leader. You become an inspiration. And that solidifies your power in such a deep way that it allows you to keep going forward, to keep creating visions for yourself into the future. Because nothing stays the same. Nothing stays the same. There is no happily ever after. You don't just stop. You don't get the guy in the house and the job and the car and the shoes and the purse and the body and stop. Things change. Things are supposed to change. And you're supposed to continue to create that new vision. You may have heard the term success breeds success. It takes money to make money. I like to change money (laughs) because it does take money to make money. It just does. And it takes success to achieve success. Once you have something, it's easier to do it again. I don't care if it stops smoking stop sugar, lose weight, start exercising, whatever it is. Once you've done something once, it's easier to do it again. I swear that the reason they say, and it's true, people with a college education are more successful, oftentimes, not always, I know there's the Steve Jobs of the world, I know that once you have done something, it boosts that confidence muscle and you're able to do it again. Once you have created a vision and you have successfully achieved that vision or even partially successfully achieved that vision, it becomes easier to refine, and to try it again the next year. You know the process. You've had a taste of success. You know what it's like, and it just makes things easier. And that's why there are so many leaders out there Whether they're thought leaders or coaches and consultants and experts or teachers or whoever it is, that's why it's important to hook up with people who have been there, done that. They have crossed the bridge. They have slayed 
several of the dragons that you are about to slay. And while you cannot completely copy their journey, it gives you faith and hope that it can be done. And you might be able to learn something from them as well. Misery loves company. (laughs) There's another phrase. And it's not that misery loves company. I believe that misery or confusion loves people who have been there before and who have made their way through to the other side. When I was going through my infidelity journey, I joined so many different Facebook groups that dealt with infidelity. And let me tell you, there were some nasty groups out there. There were some where people just wanted to whine and complain and blame and be vindictive. And I'm not going to lie in the moment, some of that felt pretty good. But that was not where I wanted to stay. That was the misery loves miserable company for a while. But then I found the groups were that were all about reconciliation and growth and moving on. And then it gave me the ability to be like, oh, yeah, that can be done. I see. I see what you did. And even though that part won't work for me, this part will. And then I attended some classes and some workshops And my husband and I went to a whole weekend and then we went to a whole, we went to two different weekends away. We used other people's success for our own. Again, it's the inspiration. It gave us something to aspire to, but it was also those little nuggets of knowledge and how to apply those nuggets of information to our situation. So that is the thought that I want to leave you with. We're going to wrap this up. Today's show was about creating the vision for you, for your life, for 2021. As you create that vision, first thing you do is hover above, give yourself the 10,000 foot view, figure out where you are at on the labyrinth of life. Don't get sucked into the negative of why did I get here? And if I only would I have done, just notice, whoa, I'm in financial trouble. I'm in marital trouble. I'm in health trouble, whatever it is. Accurately access where you're at. Then focus on where you want to be. See that path. Learn that you need to navigate. See who your allies are. See who your cheerleaders are. See who your haters and your enemies and your detractors are and see them for what they are worth and don't let them get sucked in. Look for coaches, consultants, experts, people who have been through it before and learn from them. There's no such thing as a guru. I don't want you blindly following somebody else. That's another thing we all get stuck into. But look around. See people who have done what you want to do and learn from them connect, talk, share, integrate, focus on why you want whatever it is you want. And by this time next year, you will feel exactly the way that you want to feel. You have gone incredibly deep with me today, and I know we are not done. We are so not done because this is a journey. Remember, this is our 2021. For all of 2021, I am going to keep this conversation going and I want you to join in the conversation with me. Every Monday morning at 1030 a.m. Mountain Time in the Flaunt Flock Facebook group, I am going to be hanging out. I will be there live every Monday morning, 1030 Mountain, in the Flaunt Flock on Facebook. I'm going to hang out so we can have a chance to connect, so we can talk together 
instead of me just talking one way. So you can ask questions. So you can share with me the journey that you're on. So you can connect with others who are on a similar journey. The flock is your place to find other people, other people who have either been there, done that, that you can learn from, or people who are your sisters, who are side by side. So you can create your own little cohorts of being like, all right, this is the weight loss group. All right, this is the relationship group. All right, this is the money group. This is the, I don't know who the heck I am group. Let's just hang out and talk and learn until we feel our inspiration. The flock is your place to find those leaders, to find those friendships and to connect from the heart, not from a place of detraction, but from a place of support. So I will see you virtually all week in the flock, but every Monday at 1030 a.m. Flaunt Flock Facebook group. And I can't wait to keep this conversation going. Be sure to tune in next week. Next week's show, we are going to be talking about um, the final eighth. Bridget Dengal Gaspard is the author of the book, The Final Eighth. And The Final Eighth is about finishing what we start. It's the perfect thing when you talk about vision. What she talks about in her book is most of us get seven eighths of the way in and then we quit. There's a whole lot of psychology behind that. But look at your own life because it's kind of true. How many times have you done something full force and you get to that final eighth and you're like, yeah, it's good. And you kind of slack off. So join me next week to talk about Bridget Dengel Gaspard, author of The Final Eighth. And let's all talk about finishing what we've started. Have an amazing week. I look forward to seeing you next week and in the flaunt flock. And in the meantime, always remember to flaunt exactly who you are because who you are is more than enough. Tune in next time to Flaunt. Build your dreams, live your sparkle with radio host Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Overcome the need to please and find the uninhibited joy of being exactly who you are right now. Come find your fetish, laugh out loud, accept unconditionally, navigate the negative, and trust in your truth. Find out more and get your free gift at lauracheadle.com. That's L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E dot com.